Hi, it's Barbara Greenlee with Green Moon Stamp Studio. Today we're going to go over some tips and tricks using the Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. So let's get started. Okay, let's talk about the Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. So it comes with all the plates you need. It comes with this platform and the platform is going to tell you your sandwich, depending on what you're doing. This top one is thin dies, then this is standard embossing folders, and then this is the sandwich for 3D embossing folders. So if you're ever not sure, just refer to your platform to see which plates you should be using. So we're going to die cut. So we're going to use the top sandwich, which is your platform plus the number two die, or I'm not die, the number two um, plate, and then uh, look how nicely worn my plate is, um, a cutting plate, and then a top cutting plate. And here is my, my top cutting plate. So let's cut out this butterfly. Got some Highland Heather paper. So uh, one tip is to go through your machine at an angle. It will grab your die better if it's grabbing not on a, a flat edge. So like you wouldn't want to put it through this way. That's a lot for it to grab that's very flat. It makes more, um, it's more of a problem if you're using a like rectangular die. You would never go through the machine this way with your rectangular die straight on. You would have to go at an angle. You wouldn't have to, but you'll find that it will create a lot of resistance and not want to grab your sandwich. So anyway, let's do this butterfly. Another tip is that you don't have to always cut in the center of your platform. You can cut to the side, to the back, to the front. If you always cut in the very center, then you will tend to warp your plate. And uh, then you'll wind up with plates that look like this, where it is quite warped. This is one that's been used by my club members a lot. Uh, we talked about it at club and they were like, yeah, you could do a video showing us tips for that. It's like, okay, yeah, definitely I am. So one way to keep your plate from warping like that is to flip it with each use and to vary the spot on the platform that you use. So, and to keep my things in place, I just press my finger on it so that it doesn't move. In this case, it doesn't matter because it's not a stamped image. And then since this is an intricate die, if you're concerned about that getting all the way cut, what I do is I switch it like this and put it through again. And this way I have changed the orientation. So I've changed the position on the plate for, for it cutting. So as long as you don't shift it around, because then it will double cut. But if you're just like lifting it up and then moving it, you know, then you should be fine. You can see it didn't even, didn't even stay in the die. <laughs> so uh, that is all die cut out. If you want to use the little brush, Make sure that you keep it in your die. So you, you use the brush this way with it in your die because then your cardstock is protected by the die. And then that'll take out all those extra things. If there's anything else that's left, you can just poke it. Look how easy that comes out since I ran it through twice should never have to run it through more than twice. 
if you change the orientation when you're doing it. So there's a butterfly. Get rid of this debris. And I usually take my plate over to the trash can and I just scrape it with the other plate. Still miss some. Okay, so that's that. Let's do a little butterfly. And since this one's little, I don't need to be in the center, like I said. The other thing that you need to double check is that there aren't any pieces left in the die. You, it's going to have a hard time cutting that little piece if you leave that cardstock in there. So always check your die and pop out anything that's that's in there. I'm going to flip my plate from the way we did it the first time. This one's so small, you could use the mini Stampin' Emboss. And that should just pop out of there. If it doesn't, you have these um, injection holes here, ejection holes not injection, ejection, um, that'll help pop it out of there. So there's, there's the other butterfly. We're making butterflies today. <laughs> so um, I've been wanting to cut this guy. One thing about using specialty paper, especially foil paper, this one not so much because it's got a texture. This is the um, rose gold and gold 6x6. Six six. It's in the big catalog. Um, let's see, there's some sort of angle here. You also want to make sure your plates are lined up. And if you do need to keep it in place and it's moving too much, like maybe you're framing out a stamped image, you can always use some washi tape to hold it down. Uh, the only thing I don't like about washi tape is it will leave the sticky residue on your plate. So all of the ones that we've been doing have been detail dies. So that's why I'm running them through twice. Uh, what I was going to say about the foil paper is that you want to cut your foil paper if you're doing the regular foil paper down to the size of your die because anything that's not under your die is going to get line marks from your die. All these little lines from previous cutting, that is going to leave an impression on foil paper. So always cut your foil paper to the right size. Okay, this one is like the seahorse. So it's like a um, kind of like a stencil type so it just uh, forms up like this so and then you know we could pop, pop up these scales that's cool I have not punched this one before but if you have something like this there's one like this in the hydrangea set you can use your take your pick tool to push those from the other side, or you can do it from the front, whichever works for you. 
to pop these scales up to give them some some dimension and then these little pieces here these need to these need to come out this is some thick paper So this one, this one take a little bit of work to pull all those pieces out. They're they're cut all the way through. It's just that the this paper is is thick, so it's hanging on to it with all that little glitter texture. So I will do that later, but uh, but it's a cool goldfish. And if you wanted to cut it free, you could just cut it at those spots similar to the, the seahorse. So that's cool. Okay, then uh, embossing uh, is, is not much different. It said that you will remove this number two plate. So you just move that aside. You don't need that. And I didn't bring any paper over here for the embossing, so I'm just going to use my scrap here. So if I was embossing this uh, dots folder, this is just a regular folder. I just removed that plate number two, and other than that, it's the same. It just goes between the two folders. And then uh, you have your your dot pattern embossed on there. So the other thing is, and I've got a piece of paper for this one, is the 3D embossing folders. So this is the brick and mortar 3D. One thing you'll notice about uh, some of the folders, they have a line. Uh, I like to use that to my advantage and line my cardstock up against the line if I need help making sure it's straight. Um, this piece of paper is rather large though, so I don't want to do that because now I'm going to be up here at the top of the 3D embossing folder. And if you'll notice, the pattern doesn't go up into the hinge. So you don't want to put your paper all the way up into that hinge because it will not get impressed. The pattern stops right there. So don't go all the way up there. You want to stop. So um, in this case, I'm going to, I'll still use this line as a guide at the bottom, but I don't want to go all the way up there because there's no pattern so on the 3D, instead of using this plate, which I believe is that number three, mine doesn't have a number on it, sorry about that, but yours will. So this you're just going to put flush. You want to make sure you have it uh, aligned with the bed here. You don't want to put it in crooked because then you'll hurt the side of your embossing folder. It will crinkle going in there. So make sure you have it lined up. And then you're going to put the plate four on top. That is the 3D embossing plate. And you want to make sure everything is lined up, that nothing is sticking out. And you, you do hinge first on these. Oh. Hang on, I didn't do it right. You don't do the bottom plate either. <laughs> so you just, I was like, wait, something's wrong. Yeah, on 3D embossing, you just do your folder right on the platform and then your plate four. You'll always know if something's wrong because it's not gonna feed through and that, that should be your clue, you've done something wrong. 
It, you should never have to force it through. If that handle is too hard to turn, then double check. You might have something wrong. You've made it too thick or whatever. So this is the, the 3D embossing. So it just makes an extra deep impression. I love these plates, these embossing filters. You can also uh, rub some ink on, on them and then you'll have an inked up embossed image. So those are my tips for the Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. I hope you enjoyed those tips and tricks for your Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. And uh, give me a like and subscribe to my channel and I will keep adding to this topic for beginners and advanced. Just check it out and maybe you'll pick something up that you didn't know before. Thanks. the Stampin' Stampin' Boss